Thank you very much, Oli. A very good evening to you. So as we get ready for the weekend ahead, once South Africa made it through the group stages at the Rugby World Cup, they went on to face the hosts France, England and finally New Zealand before lifting the William Webb Ellis Trophy. They faced every one of the top six in the world at the time en route to winning a back-to-back -back crown. The story was spectacular, but as the docuseries Chasing the Sun 2 has shown, there's even more that we didn't see. There are two more episodes remaining for South African viewers. I chatted to one of the stars of the team and therefore the show, double World Cup winner Ivan Etzebeth and Supersports, Zbul Njikliso, about it. For us as players, it's players to watch the again uh, all over it. I think it's the same. It probably means the same to us and the fans. Uh, we experience emotions and games that we forgot about because obviously it's a, it's a seven, eight week tournament and it goes by so quickly because the press says so much. You, you barely have time to take anything in and how to look back at it and, and just see the journey, see what we, what we did and, and achieved. It's, uh, yeah, it's incredible to watch again. And, um, it's the only pity is that we have to wait a week every time for the next episode. Uh, so it's, it's a long wait, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's greatly reliving those moments again and this time, um, as a fan and, and you know, on the couch at home and watching on the TV with a cup of coffee on a Sunday night. So, you know, it's nice to, to see everything again and, and to relive it. Do you get to learn a couple of new things about your teammates uh, and hear things in a different way that you perhaps didn't really um, anticipate, like through watching Chasing the Sun? Because certainly what it feels like for many of the fans is this unbelievable understanding and this greater understanding of you guys as players and of management that we never got to see before. Yeah, I think we, we also learned like things of our teammates, I think. Uh, look, we all we all know we we a special group that got together. We uh, we always say it's, it's a it's a group that shouldn't have have made it. If you look at each guy's individual story, um, or the individual shouldn't have have been a part of a World Cup squad because their stories don't allow it. Because it's guys who come from um, less favourite backgrounds. It's guys that come from small schools. Um, I mean, if you go, look at a guy like Kurtley, um, I mean, his story gave me, gave me goosebumps. So obviously, uh, you've got your, your friends in the team and you, you don't always chat to everyone. Everyone doesn't always, um, express their, where they come from and, and what, what road they, they walked. And yeah, to hear Kurtley's story about working in a butchery, I mean, that, that just gave me goosebumps and it just shows you, uh, this whole group has, has a story. It's no one, no one had it easy. And yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of fighters that, that came from, um, not the best of backgrounds. And I think that, that's what made us succeed. That's why we got stuck in those, in those hard games. And, um, because we, we've uh, done it in the past. We had to fight to, to where we are at the moment. So no, it's an incredible story of Kurtley. And uh, there's, there's so many. In the previous chase in the sun, the story about my Pimpy. And it's, yeah, it's just so inspiring even for us as, as fellow uh, teammates. So you say that we've got to wait a week and uh, the storytellers of Chasing the Sun 2 really left us with a cliffhanger last week because we were right in the middle of the game. But we know, obviously, having uh, knowing how it ended at the Rugby World Cup, we know what happens in the second half against uh, France. And uh, you've only scored just over a handful of tries for South Africa, one of them being the most important in that second half against France. Can you maybe just take us through running through Matteo Gelebe and being able to actually touch down and make that breakthrough for South Africa in the second half of the quarterfinal? Yeah, uh, it doesn't really felt like we won because it's, you just go, it's so intense, uh, all, all over again watching those, those finals, uh, the quarters and obviously we will still watch the semi in the final. Um, but yeah, the, the nerves just, yeah, from all, yeah, it just starts again and, um, that's incredible, uh, like you said, to watch, to watch that. And, um, I think in the, in the moment we, we had a planned move, uh, where it was a tap penalty and, um, we played in the you know, two phases or three phases later, I found myself uh, off off and um yeah, it was just uh, um someone someone on my back to help me through the contact. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely probably my most memorable try in a in a Springbok jersey um by far. Do you sometimes look back uh, at it and think, How did I how did I do that? How did I get that right? Um yeah, like like I said, it it, it doesn't always happen like that. Uh, I think we we sometimes get a get a good moment in a match where um, everything just worked for you, and I think that was one of those moments.
I think, Valen, when you produce something like Chasing the Sun, the first round, the first time around, and you've got unprecedented access, um, something that we didn't see quite often, even globally as a trend, to get that much access behind the scenes in a high-performance environment in one of the biggest sports and the biggest tournaments in the world, you know, the, 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 the responsibility to produce something that will touch people is huge on, on, on the teams involved. Um, and it became a huge su- success the first time around. The second time around, now you have to go even, even better because the Springboks did their bit, didn't they? They defended um, their, their Rugby World Cup title. So as Supersport and the, the, the partner producers in, in uh, TNW and SA Rugby, there, there was a, a huge responsibility for everyone to then, you know, uh, really, really come up uh, to the party creatively um, in terms of process and, and storytelling. And I think everyone did that in terms of resources, you know, without ha- revealing too much. There, 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 there was definitely a lot of commitment to making sure that this production you know, got what 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 South Africans fully deserved, which was what we're seeing now, a an action packed, no holds barred view at what it takes to make the Springboks the world champions. This one uh, chasing the sun to the subtitle is a story for South Africa. Can you just unpack that a little bit for us? We realize what the World Cup did, not just in twenty nineteen, go further back than that, two thousand seven. 1995, uh, 2023, is that the, the, the World Cup victory brought South Africans together. Didn't bring rugby fans together or sports fans together. It brought all of South Africa together. We saw it, we see it time and time again when our sports teams and, and individuals go out there and perform for the badge, for the country, for the flag. All of us are rooting for our sports people to win, whether it's Banyana, whether it's Bafana, whether it's Trickus, Duplessis, whether it's the Springboks, we come together. And that's what makes us South Africans so unique. This story, we wanted it to, to, to be sure, to be known that it's a story for South Africa. We wanted people to remember what it was like to come together in different fields and different creeds and colors in that moment when we were holding on to those one point margins. Um, and, and we wanted the story to speak to that, that yes, it's a story about a rugby team that achieved unbelievable feats, but it's a story for all South Africans. And we, we wanted to bring that spirit back and, and that, that unity back. Um, you know, people sit around, even having it at, at Mnet at 8 PM as the first time slot for it to air because we don't want it to be exclusively for sports fans. We want it communicated directly to all South Africans to sit around as families, uh, young, old, men, women, everyone to be together. After three episodes, do you feel that it's been able to achieve that so far? Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's done a great job in, you know, in getting conversations to be spread far and wide. I mean, the the unbelievable engagement that it's received 